Welcome back to Newsday. Thank you for staying with us. President Bola Tinubu on Thursday gave all the governors of the states in the Federation seven days to provide concrete feedback on their plans to rev up food production in their respective states. The president gave the directive at the 142nd National Economic Council meeting attended by state governors and some deputy governors at the State House, Abuja. He also announced a national construction and household support program, which will see 100,000 families in each state getting a 50,000 naira grant for three months, 155 billion naira to be dispersed for assorted food, and 540 billion naira for household grants, even as the states and the federal capital territory are expected to receive 10 billion naira allocations each for CNG buses. Dara Shabwale is our Arise News Analyst, and he joins us to discuss the approval of the 1 billion naira by President Tinubu to fund national construction and a household support initiative, as well as the need to ensure probity in the execution of the initiatives. Good afternoon, Mr. Shabwale. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure of being as usual. Always great to have you. Now, how can the government ensure that this massive fund is not misappropriated? Well, that is the responsibility of the president himself. Mm. You know, I'm happy he has said it. But then, see, it's a massive plan. And look at uh, the, the venue or the circumstances in which he made this announcement. It's the National Executive Committee meeting, normally chaired by the vice chairman. But he came in vice now. Vice president. I'm a vice president. And he came in now and he gave them instructions and he said they should get back to him in seven days. One. And then he said there must be probity. So that's you no know, respect for accountability and transparency and then most of all, performance. Because, see, it is a massive thing that he has put on the ground. Construction and household delivery. What Tinumbu has done in that plan is to link the country by road, by rail, by sea and water, you get me, to secure food security. It's a big, I will call it a big food security infrastructure program. You see, and the inputs there are logistics and food supply chain. Okay, he mentioned specifically the Badagri. That's at my own end there. Badagri to Sokoto. You know, that place has been in the pipeline for ages. You can see where the, 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 the bridge will start. We will start from Badagri Road to, to Lagos Island by like going over the lagoon. But we thought it would never materialize. And then he has explained the rationale for it. Our food baskets are on that route, our rivers, our dams. You get me? So they are linking all of them. You get me? From Sokoto down. And the aim is to ensure that to ensure that the logistics is there for the move for the food to. You see, I think the first people to be happy about this, I'm happy uh, to be happy at Nasima, mm -hmm. the Association of Timbers of Commerce Construction. He is dancing to them. They should be happy, and I'm sure as stakeholders, they will want to be involved because at the end of the day, it's you know. An angry man is an a hungry man. It's an angry man. I, you know what he said there. As you know, after our people are hungry, you have to do so. It's like he came there to beg the government that the time for species, I mean, the time for species is over. Please perform. And in seven days, give me back something. Let's leave it at that for now. 
All right. Now, in a conversation about um, efficiency, accountability, transparency, when it comes to these massive infrastructural uh, programs, uh, such as the Sokoto Badagri Expressway, I believe you also made reference to the Lagos Calabar, that yes. it's, it's, uh, it's underway. I'm not, it, you know, it, you, you, massive, massive projects. But now the question that many people are asking is why the departure from pri uh, public-private partnerships uh, that a lot of people feel inject a degree of uh, accountability and efficiency into rolling out these projects. Do you think with the current fiscal situation, the government should be, you know, single-handedly funding? There is no way government can single-handedly fund and deliver. It doesn't have the personnel. It doesn't have the resources. It can, it can only back up. That's why I mentioned NASIMA. That NASIMA is private sector. Eh? Private sector involving Commerce, construction, agriculture. Mine. Sorry, from the financing yes. side, yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, in very, even the, 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 the private sector will go to the bank for funding. Uh -huh. But now, uh, it, well, I don't need to question the source of this because we have the budget. You get me? So that is the issue. Um, it is the aim, you get me? I keep on repeating it, is to put food on the table of Nigerians. Hello. The aim is to put food on the table of Nigerians. And... Uh, mm. I understand. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to the unprecedented nature of, of course, President Tinubu coming into this meeting, as you already said earlier, uh, you know, it's, it's not a meeting we normally see the president oh, yeah. at. Uh, however, one of the, the question marks is that, you, you know, fantastic programs, I believe also um, the palliatives to the households and so forth, all positive developments, but no conversation about minimum wage. Uh, do you think that might overshadow some of the positive developments that, uh, that made it yesterday? You see, separate issues. I don't think it's a forum for minimum wage because the governor's data discussed minimum wage. I don't want to bring that into this. Let's focus. This is important enough. You mentioned about him coming to that. It shows that, he, you see, in a strategic management, when you delegate responsibility, you don't abandon that responsibility. It was monitor. It's monitoring. And he's beseeching and literally begging that report back with me, to me in seven days. And he said, there's no time. People must be fair. That is the importance of it. And you see, he, he, he said one thing. This infrastructural program will create jobs. You get me? Because it's Nigerians who work on the sites. It's Nigerians who work on the construction companies. It's Nigerian farmers and uh, fishermen who benefit from the availability of logistics and food supply chain, be safe and secure. Mm -hmm. Insecurity is still there. It's another underlying thing. But you see, they are not constrained by that. I admire the magnitude of the plan. In fact, even though we are not at work, the way I see it, it is implemented. To be like the Marshall Plan that rescued Europe after the Second World War. I was in Germany sometime. They will show you Berlin, Munich, how they were. After you are now what you are seeing now, mm. you won't believe it. Get me. All right. So I admire his courage and commitment. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm glad you, you you have your you know taking that stance. We have about a minute, Mr. Shibwali. Of course, we all know, we've all been feeling the heat since um, this administration took over with some policies. I'm just wondering, what criteria do you think should be used when it comes to the selection of the beneficiaries? Because it's uh, and you know for this household support initiative. I the, that, that is the responsibility of the government. Because we also need to know if work, if we'll be benefiting from that this. Is why, that is why, <laughs> that is why he said uh, there must be accountability. If he trusts them, we are probity. Mm -hmm. If he totally trusts them, he won't put that into it. But then, let's not put the question mark on issues or projects when they have not even started. I thought you were going to ask me about foreign something. Foreign what? I'm talking about the, what will be used uh, to determine who will get this because, of course, it's a very robust plan. But it, it, so it, it is in that. If you could recommend. Yet they, they are distributing, okay, they are distributing geopolitically. Mm -hmm. They are given the state 50,000 for 
I think 500,000 people, and then about 10 billion for purchase of food to be distributed under the auspices of the 36 governors. What question, what are, how else will they distribute it? What metrics are used to determine the households that will benefit from this? What I'm asking if you could uh, recommend, I don't not about the distribution recommend. plan. You see, we have the National Register. We've been at this for ages. The National Register, when this neck first came, they said there was no National Register. We debated it here. And we said the states have always distributed funds. And they went back. And they have been distributing funds. It's not a fresh project, please. Don't hold back the hand of the clock. We are beyond that. Next. All right. Well, we do hope that, uh, you know, some of the scandals that we've seen in the past erupting from these uh, projects mm -hmm. where cash is shared uh, to, to, to citizens. That's why I wonder. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so we hope that uh, there will be accountability. Mr. Daesh it's always a pleasure to be in conversation with you. Thank you for your time today.